This is a demonstration of the measurement of the time constant of an RC circuit and also the frequency response of an RC circuit. On the breadboard I have a resistor and a capacitor. The resistance value as measured by the multimeter is 15.92 kilo ohms. The capacitance value as measured by the multimeter is 0 0.0098 microfarads, approximately 0 0.01 microfarads. We know the time constant for a RC circuit is R times C, and that is 0.156 milliseconds. In order to view the step response of an RC circuit, I need to input a square wave from my function generator to my circuit and measure the response on my oscilloscope. What should my square wave frequency be? Well, we know for an RC circuit that in four to five time constants, the response of the RC circuit to a step input is 98% of the steady state value. About 0.7 milliseconds that will take. So if we round that up to say one millisecond and the period of the square wave is twice that, we will use a period of two milliseconds or a frequency of 500 hertz for our square wave. On my function generator, which I have turned on, I have the square wave button depressed. On the course frequency setting, I've set this at one kilo ohm. I will adjust the fine frequency to be about 500 hertz, and I'll be able to read that frequency on my oscilloscope. On my oscilloscope, I have channel one turned on, and you'll see a portion of the square wave. I'll change the time scale so I see more of the signal, and you see I see my square wave. If I select time, and then source channel one, and then frequency, I'll see what my frequency is and I'll be able to read that on my oscilloscope screen. Let me adjust the frequency to make it 500 hertz. I'm adjusting the function generator, which is the input signal, and then viewing it on the oscilloscope screen. I've now set this to be about 500 hertz. I'm going to clear the cursors on my screen and there's my input signal. I'll widen this out a little bit. And now I'm ready to take a look at the response of the RC circuit. I turn channel 2 on. Channel 2 has a different voltage resolution for the vertical scale. I'll make them both the same. Two volts per division. Now both the input and the response are on the same voltage scale, two volts per division. I see the step response of my RC circuit. I see it has been allowed to get to steady state. Let me widen this out by just changing the resolution of my time scale. I'm now going to turn channel one off so I just see my response. Now to measure the time constant for my RC circuit, I'm going to use my cursors. I'll turn cursors, cursors on and make sure the source is channel one. I'll turn V voltage one on and I'll move it down so it's at the starting point for my step response. I'll turn voltage two on and I'll bring it all the way to the top at steady state. And I need to have my source set at, at source two so that I'm reading these voltages on my measured signal. I see that delta V is 10.31 volts. I'll take 63% of that and I'll add that to V1 which is the bottom voltage of minus 5.125 volts. When I do that I get 1.37 volts. So I'll lower V2 so that on the V2 reading I read 1.37 volts and I see on my oscilloscope screen I'm about there. I then 
pick my T1 cursor and I'll push I'll put that right at the start of the response and I'll put my T2 cursor right at the intersection of the 63% 63% and the uh, response um, of my circuit. I'll read delta T and I read delta T equal to 160 microseconds which is 0 0.160 milliseconds. I expect to read 0.156 milliseconds for my time constant. So you see we have measured our time constant uh, very accurately. Um, that's how we read the time constant, determine it experimentally for a RC circuit. Now I know that if I would input a sine wave to my RC circuit, I would get a sine wave out, same frequency. If that sine wave input was at the frequency of the bandwidth of my RC circuit, which is a frequency of one over the time constant, I would expect the sine wave to have an amplitude of about 0.7 of that input amplitude sinusoid. And I would expect a phase shift of 45 degrees. Let's test to, make, to see if in fact my analysis is verified by my experimental measurement. I'm going to turn channel two off. I'm going to clear my cursors and I'm going to go over here to my function generator and I'm going to turn on a sine wave. Um, and channel 1 is on and I see my sine wave. I'm going to change the time resolution so I see more of that signal and since I need to have the frequency equal to 1 over tau and that frequency in radians per second is 6,430 radians per second, which converted to hertz is around 1,020 hertz. Uh, let me pick my time measurement and pick channel 1 and pick frequency. And I see that I'm at about 500 hertz. Let me increase that so that I read 1,020 hertz. And I'm now at 1,020 hertz. Uh, let me clear my cursors. Let me change the time resolution. And there's my input sine wave. Now what do I expect to see when I turn channel 2 on? I would expect to see a sine wave with an amplitude of 0.7 of that sine wave, same frequency, shifted 45 degrees. Let me turn channel 2 on. Uh, you see that I have that sine wave now appearing. I, I see there's a shift and I see there's an attenuation in amplitude. How can I determine the amplitude ratio? I can hit voltage for channel 1 and hit voltage peak to peak. I can then pick my source as channel 2 and hit voltage peak to peak. So if I take the ratio of the two voltages, peak to peak channel 1, 9.5, uh, 625 volts to 6.625 volts. If I take that ratio, I'll see that ratio is about 0.7. And that's what I predict. How do I determine what the phase shift is? Well, let me clear my cursors. And I know that the period of this 1020 hertz sine wave is 0.98 milliseconds. A 45 degree phase shift is one-eighth of a 360 degree period. If I divide 0.98 milliseconds by 8, I get 0.123 milliseconds. So if on my time scale, using my time cursors, um, I then, excuse me, let me, let me uh, choose cursors and choose T1, um, I can put one time marker at the peak of one sine wave and I can put the other time marker at the peak uh, of the other of the other si sine wave. Um, let me let me let me start again. Let me clear these cursors. I'm going to put one time 
at time marker at the peak of one sine wave, the other time marker at the peak of the other sine wave. And I read a delta T of 128 microseconds, which is 0.128 milliseconds, and a 45 degree phase shift would be 0.123 milliseconds. So indeed, I have a phase shift of 45 degrees. I know that if I decrease the frequency, the attenuation will be less, and the phase angle will be less. If I increase the frequency, the attenuation will increase, and the phase angle will increase up to a limit of 90 degrees phase lag. That concludes our presentation.